Hi everyone, it's uh, Al with another plumbing problem for you all. Uh, now we've all got these things um, and they're very annoying sometimes. That's your overflow pipe uh, that comes out of the loft. Okay, um, there's two there, there's one just under the ridge there. You can see it and there's another one there. Now, um, a problem I'm always getting uh, and it happens quite often is that plumbers get called in and I've been called in and you go to the main roof tank and that roof tank valve is okay. So you look at the little F and E tank next door, which is usually on the floor, and um, find that the level's right up to the overflow. And you think, right, well that's the one. So you change the ball valve, uh, and within a week you get a call back to say that it's still leaking. So what's happened? Well, I've done a little schematic drawing here. It's very rough, it's not got all the details in it, but to what is normally what happens and what you've got to do to cure it. Um, there's an easy way and there's a hard way, or should we say an expensive way and a cheap way. <laughs> okay, that's if you want to do it yourself especially. Okay, so I'm going to show you this schematic drawing I've got here. Well, it's not much of a schematic, it's, it's what I've drawn out. Um, there's our hot water tank, our boiler, um, and our little roof tank, F and E in the loft, and our main roof tank next door, and the overflow pipe running down. As you can see, the level I've drawn it is sort of the ball valves underwater, and the level is just up to the overflow. Um, so, why is that happening? I've done the ball valve, put a new one in, and it's still doing it. Well, I can tell you what that genuinely is, and generally, it is the problem lies within your hot water tank because what can happen is the inner coil that goes through your tank when it gets a bit old can get a pinhole in it uh, you get these green mark moulds in it and you can get a hole depends how acidic <laughs> your water is and um, it, it can attack and create a tiny little hole now once you've got a hole like that in the inner coil what's happening now is because these tanks are both on the ceiling the water level in the main tank is a lot higher than the water in the little tank. Now, water always wants to equalise. It always wants to equalise itself to the same level. Well, obviously, that tank is higher than that one, so it pushes down its cold feed and goes into the bottom of the tank, and all the water is in the outer part of the tank here. Okay. Now, what's happening is that pressure is higher than that in there, in the coil that's fed from the F and E, because as you know of the big tank and it being on the ceiling so water is forced back into the hole okay round the circulator back up um, I mean I've drawn it as a vent but there is actually a coal feed uh, if you take the coal feed it's being forced back up there okay back into the tank at the bottom in the coal feed and I've actually drained the little tank right out just to watch this happening and seen it actually filling up with the water turned off to the ball valve through the coal feed coming back up depends how bad that little hole is uh, until it reaches the overflow and then it runs out so it's all due to the hot water tank having a little pinhole or a little hole in it somewhere in that coil and that water pressure is being forced in down the coal, down the flame returns, up where the coal feed, I mean sometimes a coal feed is actually on this, it could be an air separator type vent, in which case it doesn't matter, it will still be forced back up into that little tank causing the overflow that's running outside. So what can you do about it? There's two options. Now most plumbers would say, and I used to do this all the time, especially when I worked for Grazing Council, uh, we had mega money back then, back in the days when there wasn't no <laughs> cuts, uh, and we just put a new cylinder in. New hot water cylinder, job done, the hole's done, everything's finished, it's proper, there's no seepage of um, mucky um, boiler water, and um, the outer part of the tank you drain off to your taps, having having a chance of mixing, um, because you've done the job. Now, you know, the thing is, that job's okay, but that's probably going to cost you about four or five hundred pounds these days because that is a very expensive job just to stop an overflow. Um, now, there is a little work way around it. Um, it's not what most plumbers would probably recommend, but it's a cheaper way of doing it. Now, I've done another little drawing here. Um, now, if you look again, this is our, our tank uh, and our little tank here that's overflowing. Um, the reason it's overflowing, as we know, is because that level is higher than that. So, on occasions where people haven't been able to afford the money, um, what you do is you make a little stand, a little tripod stand, or make it up out of wood, whatever you like, and raise the tank to the same level as your main tank, so that the water level is the same as your main tank. This equalises the pressure now, because they're both at the same water level. So now, um, when that pressure 
goes down to this tiny hole water probably won't go in and it won't come out either because although there will be a very tiny slight mixing because you still have a hole the pressure will be equal because now you don't have a heavier load bearing down on the outer side in this part of the tank that's forcing water into the hole now you have even pressure by raising that up and by doing that um, you know obviously you could just use a couple of flexes for for the feed the main feed and uh, even the overflow if you're not very apt at plumbing uh, and even if the vent normally comes over and needs cutting back anyway um, so you could possibly do it yourself if you want to do it and save a hell of a lot of money uh, if not you can still get a plumber to do it um, and as I say I don't think the mixing is very bad at all once that's done because the pressure on the outside forcing onto the coil and the pressure in the coil will be the same but obviously you still know that that is you know still going to mix a fraction but not enough to make any difference depends how bad it actually is the hole um, i mean the faster the overflow is running outside the worse you know it is i mean if it is pouring quite badly then obviously uh, you will be best to renew the cylinder but most times it's just a tiny little drip that only goes overnight or at weekends you know and um it's it's easy solvable that's the way i've always done it in the past if people can't afford the money i mean i would always recommend um putting a new cylinder in first off because that is the ultimate answer but if not um this is the other way of doing it i mean i've drawn that tank over there but obviously you can just lift it there put this put the stand there just lift the whole thing alongside it there so that all you've got to do is extend the pipes up there's only a few to do, just a cold feed, uh, the mains and uh, the overflow and obviously the vent which is probably coming over the top anyway and you can cut that back. So you could possibly do it yourself and just make the little stand up, make sure the water levels are the same and problem will be solved. Okay that's a little tip from me, um, took me years to find that one out but it's a few years ago. So if you've got that kind of system uh, with two two tanks you know um, and two valves go up and check and if that's the case uh, I think you'd be able to do it have a go do it and save yourself a lot of money okay thanks very much for watching Derrick and 33 uh, for all my videos uh, and don't forget to subscribe thanks very much for watching